This is me at five years old in my first ever tennis session, and from then on, I've been hooked. At the age of seven, I joined a high performance academy and decided to dedicate all of my time away from school to tennis. And ever since then, it's been my dream to become a professional tennis player and play in the Grand Slams. And so at the age of 18, I decided to try and turn that dream into a reality. Now the first step in every professional player's journey is to get their first ATP point, which means that you're officially ranked on the same rankings list as Djokovic, Nadal, Murray, and about 2,000 others. And so on the 16th of January, 2022, Road to One one ATP point was born. Since that day, I've shared my journey here on YouTube with you guys. Now, as you guys will know, my journey started off rough with loss after loss after loss. But in March, I began to see some success. Close losses to ATP ranked opponents, including Giles Hussey, who was ranked 750 at the time, and some wins were beginning to creep in. And in May, I played my first ever $25,000 pro event. After getting a walkover in my first round qualifying match, I played an absolute battle of a match against a Greek player to qualify for my first ever event. In the main draw, I I'd have to be a top 500 player for my first professional point and this was my first chance. I won the first set and was suddenly one set away from my goal, but it was never going to be that easy. I eventually lost a really tough match in the third set, and after this match, this is where things kind of all began to go downhill. Shortly after that match, I began to have injury after injury, first in my shoulder, followed by my elbow, which lasted for months and months without me knowing what it was. I went on an 11-match losing streak, which was terrible for my confidence and one of the toughest times mentally I've had. Eventually, I found a really good surgeon in Switzerland who said he could help me with my arm, and so in early December, I decided I decided to take the leap and go through with an arthroscopic surgery on my elbow to basically fix the issue. That of course led to a recovery phase of a few months. From December to March, I worked tirelessly to get back on the court with countless hours of physio, gym work, rehab, recovery. And after months of work, I finally made my comeback to the ITF tour in Greece. Now, I managed to come back on a win and managed to get some ITF points, which are basically the level below ATP points in my first tournament back. But after a tough two weeks, I realized my level was quite far away from where it needed to be to get my first ATP point. And so after that, a few months more of training had gone by and I began to feel better and better and better and I entered a wildcard tournament in Portugal and won five matches in a row against Division 1 college players and had my biggest ever UTR win in the final against a UTR 13 which gave me a second chance to play for my ATP point where I'd play another top 500 player this time an 18 year old who'd managed to get the better of me 6-4 6-4 in a very tight battle but I could see an improvement a week later I made my first doubles final and even had a championship point which was great for my confidence and my doubles ranking and that takes us to now playing three Three weeks worth of tournaments in Monastir, Tunisia. The first week got off to a little bit of a shaky start. We were made to play in 46 degree heat. I played against a Spanish player in the first round of qualifying and I was really struggling in the conditions. He played a very solid match and I really struggled to kind of acclimatize. I just wasn't being consistent enough and ended up losing in a very tight second set tie break having had set points. In week number two, the draw was pretty crazy. My brother who was with me on the trip ended up drawing Anthony Popperin who was actually my doubles partner for the week. So they had to play each other and then I would play the winner. So Lucian ended up coming out of that battle on top, but he unfortunately had to retire in our match with some wrist pain. This meant that I was through to the final round of qualifying where I'd play a Ghanaian player to qualify for the main draw and therefore fight for a chance for my first ATP point. This was a nails match, super tight, lots of serve volleying going on, and I had a lot of crowd support to get me through this one. After about an hour and a half, we were split sets, and so it came down to a match tiebreak to decide whether I'd qualify for the main draw. And after a long battle, I ended up losing it 10-7, a heartbreaking defeat in week number two. And before we take a look at week number three, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Now, if you want to improve your decision making, strategy, game IQ on the tennis court, then the Fuzzy Yellow Balls New Rules of Singles is something for you. It's an online course which has 38 different lessons and includes Craig O'Shaughnessy, who's actually worked with top players like Novak, and him and Will from Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Talk through some really cool strategies using the analytics of tennis, including how to beat pushers using analytics, how to play on big points using big point strategy, and finally, why the practice court is broken and how you can use new rules to implement in your training to level up your tennis. You can check out the new rules of singles in the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app or click the link down below in the description to go and check it out. In the final week, I felt great, but my dad, who usually films my matches, had to leave me for this week. And let's just say, I played some really, really good tennis. This week, I won three rounds of matches in the qualifying without dropping a set, playing some really good tennis, and this meant that I'd play main draw for my first ATP point. And as if the stars had aligned, I played a qualifier in the first round who only had one ATP point to his name as well. This was my chance. For the match, I made sure to have lots of Powerade to keep me hydrated, a spare change of clothes, and some fruit wrapped up to make sure that I was keeping my energy levels high in the match. Just preparing my stuff, a bit of extra fruit, coffee, and I'm good to go. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to film this match. But let me tell you, it was an absolute battle. And nearly two hours later, we came to match point me.
Now, words cannot describe the feeling after he missed that smash. My first ATP point, I'd officially be on the rankings and my goal over the last one and a half years had been achieved. Yes, guys, so I managed to get my first ATP point. I can't believe it. Um, what a match, played so good this whole week, fighting for every point and in that match, just broke at the right times twice and, and there we go, the, <laughs> the series is, is complete. Just gonna go in the ice bath, do some recovery. Got main draw doubles, quarterfinals tomorrow and main draw single second round. So gonna get in some recovery. Uh, oh, let's go, I'm so pumped. The ice bath. So I hopped in the ice bath and prepared myself for the next round where I would play for three ATP points. And before we take a look at the match, I want to ask those of you that haven't subscribed already to take five seconds to go down there, subscribe. It really helps to support the channel and support the creation of future videos. Now, let's take a look at how the second round went. And so in the second round, I faced Andres Martin, the seed eight American player who actually plays for Georgia Tech. I think he's the 12th highest UTR ranked player in the whole of college tennis. I think around nearly, nearly pushing 14, I want to say and he's already around 700 uh, on the ATP ranking. So it was gonna be a really tough battle. I knew I had to use my weapons, but this was probably some of the best tennis I was playing. So having come off the, the first round win and getting my first ATP point, I had loads of confidence. As you can see here, he started off really well. Unbelievable passing shot there uh, at the first point of the game, really setting the tone. And he put a lot of pressure on me uh, at the beginning of this match in my service games. Having played already uh, four singles matches and a long doubles match, um, in 35, 40 degree heat. I was pretty gassed, I felt pretty tired towards the beginning of this match, pretty fatigued, but I knew I obviously had to push on and make sure that I was being super consistent, staying solid and making balls. Um, I think I got sucked into the trap of playing his game a little bit too much, which is kind of this, just making lots of balls. I think when I'm nice and aggressive, that's gonna favor me a little bit more. Couldn't quite get on the forehand on that slice, so you know, just trying to bunt the ball as deep as possible, try and force an error from him. And as you can see, he's just staying super solid and I eventually missed that backhand up the line to give him an early break to go 3-1 up. Um, and now, you know, down a break's never a good, never a good, uh, never a good start to a match, but definitely had some, some good confidence because I did feel that I was playing some good tennis. I was playing well, I just think I needed to try and find a way of challen challen channeling that into me actually winning points. Um, so, you know, you can see me here on serve, definitely wanted to try and get some rhythm in my service games because otherwise the set was going to slip away super quick. But, you know, I was absolutely smashing my forehand, playing, hitting it really good. Um, and I think that I felt like I was going to be able to get back into this match slowly the more, the more time went on. This game here was a really tight one, I remember being at 4-2. I was really trying to break back and hold here to go four all and level out this first set. I really just said to myself, start being really aggressive in the rally. You know, you can make nine, ten, ten out of ten balls if you really crunch it uh, when you're playing good, which I was. And shots like that, I'm real, just absolutely I'm giving me an upper hand in these points. Um, you know, again here, juice opportunity. Really trying to rip my forehand, do some damage on on the backhand cross, and, and put him under a little bit of pressure, but. He was also good at neutralizing that pressure, putting me under the, on the stretch and not quite making that slice, allowing him to hold his service game to go 5-2 up in this first. I still wanted to make him serve, it, serve, serve him out for it. I definitely think that every single game was key and a good opportunity to, to kind of get used to the conditions a little bit more. Having never played on the center court, there's so much space behind the court on this one. It was really cool to play on this one. Maybe not in front of a packed crowd, um, capacity of uh, I think a thousand or something, but only filled by about five people. Um, but nevertheless, uh, holding this game here very solidly on serve was was a very good confidence booster. Uh, but he did end up playing a very solid game here to to kind of uh, serve it out. And I think I just pushed a little bit too hard on some of my shots to put too much pressure on. But nevertheless, down one uh, one break in that first meant that I served first in the second set and I wanted to start off on the right foot here. I really wanted to start off playing aggressively, playing confidently. Um, and I got a little bit of luck early on, uh, I have to say, but definitely getting my chances here at break point. He manages to hit an ace um, and holds in that game. Um, I think what a lot of good players do is they serve very, very good under pressure, like break points and, and game points. They, they usually hit aces or big serves. We saw that against Martin Powalski in, in Portugal in my first round match. And I think we've just switched to new balls. Uh, we switched balls at 11 and 13. So that's the difference between qualities and main draws that you get the new balls. You get fresh balls, which is going to give you extra pop on your serve like that. You can see and uh, I'm definitely trying to fight to, to try and find a break here and as you can see getting an opportunity to go 30 love up here and two break points here at 40-15 I said look just stay super solid try and put some pressure on him and there we go suddenly get the break go 3-1 up 
Now it's just about converting my serve to try and really, really put the pressure on it with a with a four one lead. He gets a lucky, well not lucky net call, but a net call there nevertheless, and gets two opportunities to try and break me on my serve. But I stayed nice and composed. I stayed confident. I didn't want to give him a free point, which is going to give him a, a foot in the door back in this set. He eventually misses long to give me a 4-1 lead in this second set. Now here, I'm actually leading. I think I haven't been in this, uh, this position in the match so far. So um, yeah, definitely something that I think that this game was a lot of pressure. It put a lot of pressure on this game is what I was trying to say. Um, you know, came up with a few good shots, but um, my opponent was just really solid in these games. And you know, when you feel a little bit of the pressure and you're playing a much a much um, more experienced opponent. Sometimes you have to just take a risk, and that's what I was doing. And um, you know, I think most of the time those risks were paying off. But just sometimes my opponent was was getting hitting a good shot or, or putting me under a little bit more pressure, and I was just trying to overforce it slightly. Um, but I think that this point here, thirty was was absolutely key. Tried to step in there and just sailed the backhand long, and given him the break back and now it's 5-4 on serve um, he's all the way back in this one but you know I maybe thought look let's make him pay this game maybe I can sneak out a break and take it to a third set here. <laughs> and that has to be one of the best shots I've hit I mean that is an actual joke nearly around the net post uh, or the single stick there uh, from way back in the court, this point I regret not playing a kind of a tougher lob there. It wasn't it wasn't an easy easy smash, but he manages to put it away no problems. And here I'm serving at five all, um, with a chance to go six five up. And again, it's kind of the same mindset. I'm serving into the sun. I've I've got kind of the pressure on me to try and hold here, and I'm trying to do kind of all that I can to get on my forehand and be aggressive because that's how I'm winning points exactly like that. Perfect. Um, but he's obviously just putting putting that pressure on me a little bit to, to kind of do something and a lot of the time like that he's literally put that on the line and I just wasn't sure whether to take it and that indecisiveness cost me a break and that's painful to watch back because I really felt like I could have won this set I was really in this match playing some good tennis and here you know he's serving for it at 30 all um, he comes up with a great volley there very very good depth from that one not allowing me to get there and he comes to his first match point Great hustle for me to save that match point. Back to Juice, only two points away from a from a set tie break, uh, which could change everything. Um, he puts in a very solid serve there, solid one-two punch, um, giving him a second match point. And unfortunately, that ball sails long, and I'm out in the second round. But I think a very very encouraging match. And so it's done. Road to 180p point is complete after nearly 90 episodes in the first season, which is completely insane. I want to thank all of you guys for all of the support over the whole journey. It really means a lot to me personally, and obviously it's allowed this journey to keep going and keep progressing. I've got a lot of questions over the last few days of what's happening. Am I going to stop? Am I going to carry on? I'm going to leave that on a little bit of a cliffhanger and tell you guys in next week's video what's going to be happening with my journey and the channel. But leave a comment down below what you would recommend that I do. And so make sure that you turn the notifications on if you've already subscribed to make sure that you don't miss next week's video because you definitely want to find out what's going to happen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.